Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here back with another episode of the Learning Flask series. This is episode 19 and we're going to be talking about HTTP methods in Flask. What they are, when to use them and how to use them. So I, I see quite a lot of people uh, confused about the HTTP methods in Flask. And by that I mean get, post, put, patch, delete, etc. So when to use them and where to use them and how to use them. There seems to be uh, a little bit of confusion, especially with people who are new to web development. Um, this isn't going to be a full guide on HTTP at all. That's a massive topic and we're not going to cover it in this one, but I will throw a couple of links in the description where you can find out more. So let's jump straight in to some examples here. So I've just here got a empty uh, empty Flask app open with, uh, you can see here, it's just app.py, ignore this file for now, but really it's just app.py and we've got a templates directory with a couple of templates, so very, very simple. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we are going to do is import a couple of things from Flask. So from Flask, import, uh, we need to import Flask itself. Uh, I'm going to import make response. I'm going to import JSONify request and render template. So obviously you don't have to do this, um, but feel free to follow along with the examples. So first thing we need to do is create our app. So app equals flask and then to flask we pass the special variable name. Uh, so what's this example going to be? So I'm going to build like a little mock database out of a dictionary and we're going to manipulate some of the values in it and we're going to get some of the values in it and we're going to use the different request methods to do different things with our values and I'll explain everything as we go. But I'm going to try and do this all in one take so it might be a little longer than usual but I'm going to try and get through it quickly. So let's just create a simple dictionary it's going to have a collection which we're going to call fruit and then it's going to have several members of that collection apple let's say 30 items banana let's do 45 bananas and cherries let's do let's do a thousand so this is going to be our kind of mock database so using the http methods in flask Many of you would have seen the following. So create an app root and let's just do something very, very simple like get text. And then you create the function underneath and then you return something. So let's just return some text. So extremely simple, probably the most basic route you can get in Flask. Um, we're not declaring any request methods in the root and we are just returning some text. Now by default any root like this in Flask only accepts get requests. So that's a really important thing to remember. By default app.root plus your URL in here will only work with a get request. So while we're on the topic of requests let's list some of them out. So we've got get, we've got post, we've got uh, put, we've got, oh goodness gracious, we've got patch, I cannot type today, I can't type in general, and we've got, <laughs> I find it really hard to talk and type. I am trying to get better. So these, are, these aren't all of the request methods, and if we head over to um, this wiki page, you can see there's heaps of stuff on HTTP. But if we scroll, uh, no, it's not on this one. Oh, it's on a different one, I haven't got it here. But there's plenty of uh, HTTP, HTTP methods. We're not gonna cover them all in this video, we're just gonna cover a few. And there's also the HTTP status codes, which I'm sure you'll be familiar with if you've ever gone to a website, for example, google.com forward slash some random gibberish. There we go. We've got a 404. Now, 404 
is a HTTP status code. So let's quickly scroll down here and you can see we've got different levels of status code. So we've got the 200 range, we've got the 300 range, which is uh, the category of redirection and the 200s generally mean success. Well, in fact, they all mean success. Uh, the 400 ones mean client errors or it's the client errors category means meaning that the client, so us, we've done something wrong. We've requested a resource that doesn't exist. We've sent something, you know, malformed to the server. So a 404 is not found because we're trying to request something that is not found. But this isn't going to be a video about these status codes, but we will be using them throughout this example. So go ahead and read up on HTTP and understand a bit more about how it works because it will go a long way, especially in web development. So we've got a few examples here of the methods that we're going to be working with. So get, you know, we are getting a resource from the server. We're not providing any information other than just a URL of the resource that we want to get. So that is the client making the request. The server then receives that request and returns a response. So this is the HTTP protocol of a request and a response. It's a, it's a cycle. The client does something, the server receives it, and then the server returns something. So the request and the response. And these are the request methods. So we've got the get request, which I've just explained, is when you want to fetch a resource from the server. Post is when you want to create a new resource on the server. Let's say you're creating a new user account. You want to use post. Put is similar to post where you are creating new data on the um, server. Excuse me. But you will also overwrite um, an existing um, an existing collection or member if it already exists. So what that basically means is that here's some data, create it if it doesn't exist. However, if it does already exist, just overwrite, just replace whatever exists on the server with this new data that we're sending up. Patch is similar to put, however, it won't just, you know, savagely overwrite everything that we've, uh, an existing bit of data. It will create new data on the server if it doesn't exist, but if the data does exist on the server, then it's just going to update it. So let's just take this example of our stock here. If we made a GET request to a URL, um, we're requesting stock, it's just going to send back the stock. Maybe we make a GET request to the collection, then it's just going to return that collection. Or maybe we make a GET request to this member and all it's going to do is return maybe the value here. As opposed to post, you know, let's say we make a post request and we want to create a new um, new collection. If that collection doesn't already exist, then we're going to go ahead and create it. However, if that collection does already exist, then we don't want to create it because it already exists on the server. Put, like, like I explained, is just going to create it if it doesn't exist. So let's say, say we send a put request to create a new um, a new collection here. Let's call it dairy, for example. It's going to go ahead and create dairy. However, if we send a put request to create a collection called fruit, well, fruit already exists. So what it's going to do is just create a new collection called fruit and replace these values with whatever we tell or whatever we send in the request body. Uh, patch is different. It will create a new collection if it doesn't exist, or it will update these values. So let's say we send a uh, patch request with the uh, fruit collection here. And in that collection, let's say we have apple 20, banana 45, and pineapple 10. Well, all it's going to do is update any existing values and also create a new value. And delete, it's quite self-explanatory, it's just going to delete um, whatever collection or um, member that we tell it to delete. 
And I'm using the terms collection and member, but that's just based on this kind of schema that we've defined here. It can be anything. So it just makes sense to phrase it in a way like, you know, we've got a collection here. Each collection contains members and then each member can either have its own collection of members or it can just have a value, you know, it depends however you want to organize your data, your application. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit better. So let's jump into some more examples because I did go off on a bit of a tangent there. <laughs> right. So let's do some more get request stuff. So app dot root. So a very familiar one will be returning some HTML. So a template. So let's create our function. We'll call it index and we will return the render template function and pass it our template index.html. So let's go to the browser. Whoops. Don't know what that is. And let's go to our index. Oh, is our app not running? There we go. We've rendered a template, a nice, highly modern, responsive, fluid um, template here using all the latest HTML and JavaScript. So rendering a template, you've probably done it before. And as you can see, it's very simple. And again, it's a get request by default. And that's what we want. You know, the client is making a request to this URL and we are returning some HTML data. This is our response. So what else can we do with get? Well, we can work with query strings. So let's create a new route. I'm going to just call it slash QS for query string and def QS create a function and we will return uh, no query. However, if we do get a query string, what I want to do is if request.args and we use request.args to access the query string argument and then we'll go and just save our query string as res. And then what I want to do is return just a simple string, but we're gonna format it slightly. So return, let's do a string dot join. And then what I'm gonna do is pass another F string in here with the key separated and then the value and a space. And then we're gonna do a bit of comprehension here for uh, kv for k comma v in res.items. So that should give us a joint string of the query strings. And if you remember query strings, uh, if you never worked with them before, I do have a video on that in the Flask series. So go ahead and watch that if you want to learn more about query strings. So send a query string, it's a question mark followed by a key, so name separated by a an equals and then the value. So you know, I might want to do something like name equals Julian. And then if you want more keys and values, you just use an ampersand. So language equals Python. And what that's going to do is request.args is going to serialize that into a dictionary like object that we can work with. So let's go ahead and go to QS here and oh. Oh. my bad. Wrong variable name. Let's try that again. Oh, we've already got that query string in there. So let's go ahead and just without a query string, we get that. Maybe we'll do uh, name equals foo. Uh, and length, my God, I'm sorry, I cannot type language equals Python. There we go, we get a formatted string. So again, using a get request, but we are supplying some data in the query string, and then we use request.args to uh, pass and handle that data. So next thing we are, let's go ahead and create another get request. So app.root, I'm going to call this stock def, uh, we'll just call it stock. What I'm going to do is 
I want to return a JSON representation of this stock here. So we're going to use make response and JSONify. So make response builds our response and we can build it ahead of time. And then we use JSONify to pass a Python object into a JSON object. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, res equals make response and then to make response we pass JSONify and then to JSONify we're going to pass our stock and then we're also going to supply an HTTP code of 200 which if we take a quick glance up at the information here 200 means OK and we will use a few more different uh, codes throughout this example. So let's just return the res like so. Then if we head to stock, oh. what have I done? Oh, it's because I've called that stock, I think. Let's change that to get stock and try again. There we go. So let's do a quick zoom in. So you can see we've just returned, uh, we look at the raw data, so that's what our um, route has actually returned. This here is just uh, Firefox doing some formatting. So we've just dumped out our JSON here into the browser. So let's move on from just working in the browser and let's, um, Let's work with a more kind of API style of programming. For that, we are going to be using Postman, which I have talked about before, but if you want to get this app, just head to um, I think it's getpostman.com. Again, I'll throw a link in the description to that. What Postman does is it allows us to uh, make a request to a URL and see the response. So we've got all of these different options. You can see we've got get, post, put, patch, and delete, which are the methods that we're gonna be covering in this video. But you can see here some of the different options, copy, head, options, link. You won't commonly use these if you're building apps. One of these are the most common. So we can just make a request and then it returns some data. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and build some more routes. Well, in fact, we can currently use this stock one, which I think I just demonstrated there. So again, the URL is just slash stock and we're returning a JSON response of our stock data here. So if we come to here, Postman, we're making a get request and the URL is the Flask development server slash stock. Go ahead and send that and you can see here, we get our JSON response. So that's another way of working with get requests. So let's go ahead and create a few more. So let's say we want to get a collection, for example, not just get the stock. I'm just gonna paste these in because otherwise this video is gonna to take too long. So again, no parameters. So this is a get request or sorry, no, uh, no method arguments. So this is a get request. And we've just got a uh, URL here with a variable passing that variable into the function, doing a quick lookup in the database, and if it's there, we're just uh, returning a JSON string of that collection. And again, collect by collection, I mean fruit or any other type which we're gonna be adding shortly. So let's go and test this out. So come here, we've I've already got this set up, so stock forward slash fruit, because that's the name of our collection. Let's make our request, and there we go we just get the collection, which obviously is different from just pulling in the raw stock because we're just getting a specific collection. So next example, we could access a uh, specific member of a collection. Again, I'm just gonna copy and paste this in guys to, uh, to make things quick. And actually I just need to do a bit of cleanup because I do, I've got all of these in here and I don't want any conflicts in the uh, function names. So the next route that we've created is very similar, apart from we've got slash members bolted on. And again, it's gonna do the same thing. It's just gonna look up a 
collection, it's going to look up the member in that collection and then return some details. If all went well, we're returning a 200. And if the uh, member wasn't found, we're returning a 400. And if the, I think actually that should be collection. Collection not found. If the collection isn't in the stock, then we return an error message. So let's go ahead and check that out. So stock slash fruit. In fact, we've got it here. So tomato doesn't exist. So we can go ahead and do that. Unknown member. However, we know we've got apple. So let's go ahead and try apple. And there we go. We get the quantity of apples, which is 30. So again, head back to our little database here. This is the value that we're looking for in this route. So let's start working with some different request methods. We're going to look at post, but before we look at post on its own, we're going to look at uh, using more than one request method. And you'll often find this if you're, if you want to render a template, which maybe has a form on it, or you want to uh, both perform a get request and a post request in the same route. And I'll show you how to handle that. So we've got a route here, just forward slash add collection. And we use the methods uh, argument here and we supply a list of the uh, request, me request methods that we want to use. So we want to use get because we want to render a template just like we've done in the previous example. But we also have a form on that template and we want to submit that form data with a post request to this same URL. So let's take a quick look at the template. So it's templates, add collection. And I'm not gonna go into much detail on this, but here's the form. And you can see the URL is the same as the uh, route that's serving this template up. The methods here we've got set to post because we want to post the data. We're creating a new collection in this example. So then we've just got a few input fields and a button to submit that form. And you'll see what this is shortly. So let's go ahead and go to um, slash add collection. Might have to make this a little smaller. Uh, I hope you guys can see that. So here's our form and we're also rendering out our stock. So let's, let's create a new collection and then we'll talk over the route after. So um, this is going to be to create a new collection. So if the collection already exists, it's not going to create it. So let's do one called dairy and we'll create a, a new member called milk. And let's just say we've got 20. So let's go ahead and add that collection. So there we go. The collection has been created. But now if we were to try and fruit and, you know, uh, mango, 22 of them, the collection fruit already exists. So this is the logic that we've uh, built into our root. So you can see here, it will render the template if the method is get. And it does that because we've got this um, if statement in here. So let's walk down this quickly. So the function is going to run. And so someone's going to come and request this URL in, in the browser like we've just done and it's going to be a get request. So it's going to skip out this here because the request.method is not equal to post, it's equal to get, because that's the default when you make a request to a URL. So it's just gonna skip all of this block and it's gonna return our template. And uh, here you can see we're just passing in the template and the stock variable here. However, when the form is submitted, it submits a post request. And because the form has got the same action here as the URL, it's going to make a post request to the same URL. So this if statement is going to trigger. And then we're just accessing those form values, storing them as variables, and just doing some validation here. If the collection already exists, then we're not going to create it. However, if the collection doesn't exist, then we're going to go ahead and create it here. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you can see how we can have get and post in the same route. Because get requests are triggering a different action 
within our function here. And a post request will trigger this part of the function. And we use the request dot method. And you know, the request object in Flask is really, really powerful. It's got so many uh, different attributes to it that make working with Flask, it just makes things good. Like you can do lots of validation, you can get lots of information about the URL, the domain, all sorts. So I'll chuck a link to the request um, documentation in the description as well. So that's using get and post. So how about a route with just post? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna copy this in. So we've created a new route here. It's slash stock slash collections or slash collection. One thing you'll notice is that we've already got this URL in our app. If we come up to here, you can see we've got, um, there's this one here, slash stock slash collection. However, this is only listening to get requests. And this one here, we've explicitly provided the post uh, argument here in the methods. So that means that this URL is only going to listen and respond to post requests. So again, all we're doing is creating a collection. So basically the same thing as what we're doing in that form, but rather than form data, we've got JSON data here. So let's jump back into Postman and quickly demo this. So we're gonna create a new um, collection called electronics and we're passing in some uh, members here with some values. So let's go ahead and do that. Method not allowed, what have I done? Um, oh, I didn't save, that's why. That helps. Okay, so we've created our collection. So let's go and check out our collections or our database now. We can see there we've got electronics. And if we try and do it again, the collection already exists because we've programmed it in. We only want it to create new data. That's what we're using this post method for. So the next example is uh, put. So if you remember, put is just going to overwrite a collection or create it if it doesn't exist. So you can see here I've got in this doc string, it's gonna replace or create a collection. And here it's just an example of what we're expecting in the body. And in this route, there's really not that much logic because we are just replacing anything in that collection. If it's there, overwrite it. If it's not there, create it. So let's go ahead and head to put. And again, just use a drop down here, select put. And if you, you need to scroll to body and select JSON, application JSON. So we're gonna create a new collection called, do we have dairy? No, we don't have dairy. Okay, so let's go ahead and create dairy and I'll just put cream for now, send. Again, I didn't save it, sorry guys. Try again. Okay, collection replaced. And that's just gonna keep on working every time we submit that, because it doesn't care. It will just overwrite or create whatever's at the end. So now you can see here, we've got dairy. However, if we were to maybe add uh, milk to that again, 55 cartons of milk, it's been replaced. Let's go check our stock, there we go. So I hope that makes sense of what the put method does. Let's move on to patch. So patch is kind of similar to put, however it's not going to just replace whatever values are there. So again, it's the same URL, slash stock, slash collection, but the only difference is the method is patch. So this is only going to listen to uh, requests that are made using patch. So let me go ahead and save that so we don't have that same mistake. So again, this is going to update or create a collection. It's not just going to overwrite. I don't know if I did a very good example here of the put request, but if we just check out again, so, oh, that's gone now because we've lost our dictionary. Um, but let's go ahead, just put in the dairy. So we've got dairy there now. If we were to, let's say, 
uh, delete these values and change them completely. So let's go eggs 65, need to delete that comma, send that. It's replaced the collection and you can see we've got none of the other values anymore. They've all been wiped. So that's what put does. So I don't think I made that very clear. So patch, patch is gonna update or create. So again, very similar sort of internals, but rather than overwrite, we're gonna step through the keys and the values in our, um, in our collections here and update them. So we've got this stock and we're accessing the, uh, the key using the collection keyword here. And then we've broken down our request dictionary into keys and values, which we're then using to step through and assign values. And because we're using this assignment, if the value already exists, it's just going to update it. Um, and then if the value doesn't exist, it's going to go ahead and create it. Otherwise, we're just creating a new collection with the uh, request body here. So let's go ahead and go to our patch. So I've got an example here of frozen food. So let's go ahead and create this patch. So yeah, we get a message there, collection created. And if we come down, check our stock, there we go, we've got frozen. However, if we try and submit this again, you get a different message, we get collection updated because it hasn't created a new collection, it's updated the existing values. However, if we, let's change the values and throw in an additional value for frozen. So let's do peas, let's just do 15, and let's say we've got five carrots. We're running low, maybe it's Christmas. Um, what else can we do in frozen? Uh, let's do sweet corn. Let's say we've got tons of sweet corn. We go ahead and send that. We've updated the collection. You can see this was our previous uh, entry for frozen. Go ahead and refresh, and there we go. We've updated the value, so we've got five carrots, 15 peas, and uh, 100 sweet corn. So that is what Patch is doing. It's uh, updating or creating, not just savagely overwriting like, uh, like put. So the next example, again, I'm gonna show you another patch example, but rather than just access the collection, we're gonna go ahead and modify the member. So again, very similar URL structure. We've got the variables here in the URL. The method is patch, excuse me. And we're passing the collection and the member into the function. And this function is going to update or create a collection member. And this is what we expect in the body. So we're gonna just send a JSON uh, object here, and it's gonna look a little bit like this. So again, we're doing something very similar. We're just uh, checking to see if we've got the collection in stock, stepping through the keys and values in our request body, doing a little lookup, and then updating the values. And then we've got a response here with um, a message and a successful HTTP code. And again, if the member doesn't exist, we'll go ahead and create the member. So let's go ahead and save and demo this quickly. So let's go to patch. Um, let's quickly check our stock. Okay, so we're back down to fruit because our dictionary has been reset because we saved the application. So let's go and add another, um, let's add peaches. We don't have peaches in there and this is already here. So let's say it was a bumper crop of peaches and we got a thousand. So we created the collection member because that didn't exist. And if you go and check stock, there we go. Another thing I've, I forgot to point out actually on um, Postman is you get the status code here. I should have probably pointed that out earlier, but that's um, another way of visualizing the response. So that is patch in action. And if we try and do peaches again, you get a different message updated because the member already exists in our collection and it doesn't need to recreate it. So it just updates it. So the final couple of examples I'm gonna show you are delete. delete. So I'm gonna bring in our last two. Well, let's bring in one at a time. So we're gonna use the delete request method here and really it does what it says on the tin it's going to delete so as per before we've got slash stock slash collection 
and this URL is only going to listen and respond to requests with the delete method used. <laughs> so um, function here, passing in collection, and if the collection exists, delete it. So if collection in stock, del stock, and then we'll access that with the key. And then what we're doing here, which we haven't done before, we're just sending back an empty JSON response with a 204 status code, which means the action has been enacted. So it's in the 200 range, so it means successful. And the 04 just means the action has been enacted. So you could do a 200, which just means, OK, that was absolutely fine. Or you can do a 204. It really doesn't matter. However, if the collection doesn't exist, again, we're just returning an error saying the collection wasn't found and we're supplying a 400. So let's go ahead and give this a bash. So, OK, we got here stock and the collection of beauty. We know that collection doesn't exist, so we try and delete it. Boom, collection not found, and we get a 400 bad request. However, we've only got fruit, so maybe we should go ahead and quickly create a new collection, electronics. Let's check our stock. Looking good, we got electronics. Now let's go ahead and delete the electronics collection. Send, boom, we get no response which is what we programmed in, and that means success. And we've also got the uh, 204 here, no content. And that it's just another way of saying, absolutely fine. We did what we needed to do, but we've got nothing more to say about it. So now let's check our stock levels. Electronics are gone. We have wiped them. So that's how you use the delete method. And the last one I'm going to show you is, again, it's delete, but we're going to delete a member. Again, exact same URL structure with the delete method here. So this URL is only going to listen and only going to respond when a request comes into this URL with the delete method. Again, passing in collection of member, doing a quick lookup in our database. If the member exists in the collection, we'll go ahead and delete it. And again, we're doing the 204 here to say that the action has been enacted. We've deleted it. We've done, as you said, and everything went well. However, if the uh, member doesn't exist, then we'll go ahead and return. The member's not found. And if the collection doesn't exist, same thing. Let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and create our electronics again. Check the stock. Looking good. So let's go ahead and stock. And we want electronics and we want to delete, uh, well, in fact, first thing, we can try tablet because we know tablet doesn't exist. Member not found, perfect. 400 bad requests, that's what we want. However, we do know we do have laptops and TVs, so let's go ahead and delete our stock of TVs. Boom, gone. 204 means everything went well. Let's check our stock. Okay, and TVs have disappeared. So, that pretty much covers it for this one. Um, I hope it made sense, and I know it's quite a long one. I've been going for about 38 minutes now, so I do appreciate you sticking around, but I do think it's important that you get a basic understanding of HTTP and how to use the HTTP methods. Um, it's also well worth coming and having a read-through of this, maybe even save it to a bookmark. That's what I do. Um, I'd also recommend reading up on HTTP because that's going to give you some uh, more context and tell you a bit more about the different methods. Um, it's really not that complicated. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's, there is a lot to it, um, but, you know, slowly build up your knowledge and things will just start to make more sense and you'll be able to build applications and functions and things on the web much more easily and quicker and more efficient. The more knowledge you know, the less frustrated you're going to be when something isn't working. You think it should, but it, you know, it's just not working. And that just comes with time. And it's something that I'm still learning myself. So I'm no expert by any means. Um, it's just time, putting the effort, trial and error, experimentation, and 
you will you will learn these things over time and you'll be able to visualize things in your mind and it just makes like it just makes sense so again i'm learning all the time and i hope you guys are too and you i hope you're finding these vid videos valuable if you are feel free to hit that subscribe button and uh and share the video or drop a like on it i do really appreciate it and it lets me know that you guys are enjoying it uh, if you've got any comments or questions do drop them in the comments below i always like to get some feedback on these videos if i made any mistakes then i do genuinely want to know because i want to try and give you accurate information um, but like i said i'm not an expert and i am still uh, i'm still learning and we're all always learning and you have to it's the only way that you can uh, especially with something like the web or program in general you've always got to be learning trying something new not being afraid to make mistakes so i'm on a proper rant now i'm rambling on <laughs> Anyway, guys, I will have a text-based version of this uh, tutorial in the link in the uh, in, in the description below. So go ahead and read through that in your own time. So that wraps it up for this one. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.